second reading of the court's remote participation yep. bill. Uh, and can I start, uh, Mr. Speaker, by um, commenting on the Select Committee. Um, we have reached the stage, I think, during the course of this parliamentary session where we have uh, enjoyed each other's um, uh, company and we respect each other's views and have, in fact, uh, I think, as um, David Parker referred to, um, developed a, an excellent uh, working relationship. But occasionally uh, we have disagreed and this is one of those issues. Um, and I can accept that. Uh, basically, the, the, uh, the, the particular issue that <coughs> we disagree on in this uh, bill is the um, second aspect of what it tries to achieve, uh, there being three aspects, firstly in terms of use of uh, AV, uh, AVL in criminal procedural, uh, but the second act aspect is in the criminal substantive hearing, uh, and then of course the third part being civil matters. But I guess I do get a bit annoyed when the opposition, uh, as they have this evening, stand, instead of acknowledging in a civilised manner the fact that we might have differences, lecture us, a government that was elected to govern and then stand and say that we are using power, not wisdom, when that opposition made an art form of that very phrase, an art form of it. So I suggest that in, in the spirit of our normal camaraderie, Lynn, that we should in fact uh, set aside uh, the fact that um, we have been uh, you just have to accept and respect the fact that, um, uh, that uh, we, this government has been elected to govern, and that's exactly what it's doing, Mr Speaker. I just want to make a couple of comments, and uh, can I summarise, I think, what I, can I summarise the opposition's um, um, arguments and debate this evening, Mr Speaker, by saying that... Um, it really has focused on the extraordinary, exceptional case that may occur. And they have taken that and blown it up as though, in fact, it's going to be the norm. Now, I'm a fair-minded New Zealander, Mr Speaker, and I agree that one can never say never. But the simple fact of the matter is, in respect of criminal procedures, that we have a justice system, as Mr Parker referred to, that is independent and professional. And should the case arise where a, um, a defendant uh, has been given and uh, served an injustice, then he has the right to appeal. And we have a system where, in fact, we can go to a higher court and have our case heard. And that seems to have been lost. The simple fact of the matter is our courts are inefficient, they are clogged up, they are years behind, and we have an excellent uh, Minister of Courts, uh, Mr Speaker, that is doing a wonderful job to, in fact, bring new and innovative solutions, um, having... Uh, not necessarily well picked up uh, um, uh, uh, some difficult uh, issues and is addressing those and I see uh, continuing to address it in the last budget. But um, I think it's important that in fact we do look at the practicalities of it and another observation I would make in this debate is that <clears throat> the contribution from this side of the House and in particular from Chester Burroughs and Simon Bridges actually came from people that had experience in the field of endeavour that we are in talking about, as opposed to the opposition who, as per normal, stand up and talk about theory. 
And to me, until you've walked the walk and talked the talk, then, you know, it's time that, in fact, you took a little experience. So I suggest to the opposition that actually come down from the academic, come down from the theory, and listen to the practitioners, because they are the people that actually are much better placed to actually um, uh, 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 share the experience and the practicalities. I just want to focus uh, on the criteria in respect of, um, of criminal procedures, and that's the um, uh, Clause 9. And Clause 9 is particularly relevant because it's that clause which specifies that, in fact, a judge must, is, is the one that makes the decision in respect of crim criminal procedures, and I think that provides every safeguard going forward. So with those few words, uh, Mr Speaker, I commend the second reading to the House. Members, the question is that the amendments recommended by the Justice and Electoral Committee by a majority be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. Contrary will say no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. The question... The ayes have it. Party vote. I'll ask the clerk for a party vote. New Zealand National. 58 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 43 votes against. Green Party. Nine votes opposed. Act New Zealand. Five votes in favour. Māori Party. Tokotoru Tautokwan. Progressive. One vote against. United Future. One vote against. Any other votes? Members, the ayes are 66, the noes are 54. The motion is agreed to. The question now is that the motion be agreed to. Those of that opinion will say aye. aye. For the contrary, no. no. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. The ayes have it. Party vote. I'll ask the clerk for a party vote. New Zealand National. 58 votes in favour. New Zealand Labour. 43 votes against. Green Party. Nine votes opposed. Act New Zealand. Five votes in favour. Māori Party. Tokotoru e Tautokwan. Progressive. One vote against. United Future. One vote opposed. Any other votes? Members, the ayes are 66, the noes are 54. The motion is agreed to. Courts Remote Participation Bill, second reading. This bill is set down for committee stage next sitting day. Call on Government Order of the Day, number three. Statutes Amendment Bill, committee stage. I declare the House in committee for consideration of the Statutes Amendment Bill. Mr Speaker. Mr Chairman. Members, the House is in committee for the Statute uh, Amendment Bill. Mr Chair. I call the Honourable Nathan Guy. Mr Chair, I seek leave for the debate on the 47 parts of the Statute's Amendment Bill to be taken as one debate, with the questions on each part to be put...